Hello, thank you for joining me today. We've been reading through A Course in Miracles, the main text, and today we are going to continue our reading of chapter 21, which is Reason and Perception, and we will take up section four today, Faith, Belief, and Vision. All special relationships have sin as their goal for they are bargains with reality towards which the seeming union is adjusted. Forget not this, to bargain is to set a limit, and any brother with whom you have limited relationship, you hate. You may attempt to keep the bargain in the name of fairness, sometimes demanding payment of yourself, perhaps more often of the other, Thus, in the fairness, you attempt to ease the guilt that comes from the accepted purpose of the relationship. And that is why the Holy Spirit must change its purpose to make it useful to him and harmless to you. If you accept this change, you have accepted the idea of making room for truth. The source of sin is gone. You may imagine that you still experience its effects, but it is not your purpose and you no longer want it. No one allows a purpose to be replaced while he desires it, for nothing is so cherished and protected as is a goal the mind accepts. This it will follow grimly or happily, but always with faith and with the persistence that faith inevitably brings. The power of faith is never recognized if it is placed in sin, but it is always recognized if it is placed in love. Why is it strange to you that faith can move mountains? This is indeed a little feat for such power, for faith can keep the Son of God in chains as long as he believes he is in chains. And when he is released from them, it will simply be because he no longer believes in them, withdrawing faith that they can hold him and placing it in his freedom instead. It is impossible to place equal faith in opposite directions. What faith you give sin you take away from holiness, and what you offer holiness has been removed from sin. Faith and belief and vision are the means by which the goal of holiness is reached. Through them, the Holy Spirit leads you to the real world and away from all illusions where your faith is laid. This is his direction the only one he ever sees. And when you wander, he reminds you there is but one. His faith and his belief and vision are all for you. And when you have accepted them completely instead of yours, you will have need for them no longer, for faith and vision and belief are meaningful only before the state of certainty is reached. In heaven they are unknown, yet heaven is reached through them. It is impossible that the Son of God lack faith, but he can choose where he would have it be. Faithlessness is not a lack of faith, but faith in nothing. Faith given to illusions does not lack power, for by, for by it does the Son of God believe that he is powerless. Thus is his, he is faithless to himself, but strong in faith in his illusions about himself. For faith, perception, and belief you made as means for losing certainty and finding sin. This mad direction was your choice, and by your faith in what you choose, you made what you desired. The Holy Spirit has a use for all the means for sin by which you sought to find it. 
but he uses them. But as he uses them, they lead away from sin because his purpose lies in the opposite direction. He sees the means you use, but not the purpose for which you made them. He would not take them from you, for he sees their value as a means for what he wills for you. You made perception that you might choose among your brothers and seek for sin with them. The Holy Spirit seeks perception as a means to teach you that the vision of a holy relationship is all you want to see. Then will you give your faith to holiness, desiring and believing in it because of your desire. Faith and belief become attached to vision as all the means that once served sin are redirected now toward holiness. For what you think is sin is limitation, and whom you try to limit to the body you hate because you fear. In your refusal to forgive him, you would condemn him to the body because the means for sin are dear to you. And so the body has your faith and your belief. But holiness would set your brother free, removing hatred by removing fear, not as a symptom, but at its source. Those who would free their brothers from the body have no fear. They have renounced the means for sin by choosing to let all limitations be removed. As they desire to look upon their brothers in holiness, the power of belief and faith goes far beyond the body, supporting vision, not obstructing it. For first they choose to recognize how much their faith had limited their understanding of the world, desiring to place its power elsewhere should another point of view be given them. The miracles that follow this decision are also born of faith. For all who choose to look away from sin are given vision and are led to holiness. Those who believe in sin must think, think the Holy Spirit asks for sacrifice, for this is how they think their purpose is accomplished. Brother, the Holy Spirit knows that sacrifice brings nothing. He makes no bargains. And if you seek to limit him, you will hate him because you are afraid. The gift that he has given you is more than anything that stands this side of heaven. The instant for its recognition is at hand. Join your awareness to what has already joined, been joined. The faith you give your brother can accomplish this. For he who loves the world is seeing it for you without one spot of sin upon it and in the innocence that makes the sight of it as beautiful as heaven. Your faith in sacrifice has given it great power in your sight, except you do not realize you cannot see because of it. For sacrifice must be exacted of a body and by another body. The mind can neither ask it nor receive it of itself, and no more could the body. The intention is the mind which tries to use the body to carry out the means for sin in which the mind believes. Thus is the joining of mind and body in inescapable belief of those who value sin. And so is sacrifice invariably a means for limitation and thus for hate. Think you the Holy Spirit is concerned with this? He gives not what it is his purpose to lead you from. You think he would deprive you for your good, but good and deprivation are opposites and cannot meanfully join in any way. It is like saying 
that the moon and sun are one because they come with night and day, and so they must be joined. Yet sight of one is but the sign the other has disappeared from sight. Nor is it possible that what gives light to one with what depends on darkness to be seen. Let me read that sentence again. Nor is it possible that what gives light to one with what depends on darkness to be seen. It's not any better. Neither demands the sacrifice of the other. Yet on the absence of the other does each depend. The body was made to be a sacrifice to sin and in the darkness, so it still is seen. Yet in the light of vision, it is looked upon quite differently. You can have faith in it to serve the Holy Spirit's goal and give it power to serve as means to help the blind to see. But in their seeing, they look past it, as do you. And faith and the belief you gave it belongs beyond. You gave perception and belief and faith from mind to body. Let them now be given back to what produced them and can use them still to save itself from what it made. Well, <laughs> if you've been following me along, you know that I am always less than thrilled with the complexity of uh, and the difficulty of this text to absorb. Uh, and this is a particularly difficult, uh, difficult section because it doesn't really um, bring up a lot of good comments uh, to share. Uh, I'll, I'll address this first sentence in this uh, section. All special relationships have sin as their goal. I think I need to clarify that. That is not a conscious goal, right? Like we don't set out to be sinful. Um, so what it's saying here is that when you create these special relationships, you unwittingly have created sin as your goal. When I look at this section, um, special relationships, right? We are all uh, we are all one. And so whenever we're, we're trying to create special relationships, we've walked off the path, right? Um, we're, we're stuck in separation. We're looking at things through a lens that doesn't really serve us. So um, I'm just looking for at these paragraphs to see if there's something that jumps out at me uh, to discuss. So those who would free their brothers from the body can have no fear. They have renounced the means for sin by choosing to let all limitations be removed. As isn't that what we're after here? is to have all limitations removed, to come to the place of oneness. So uh, in the next paragraph starts, those who believe in sin must think the Holy Spirit asks for sacrifice, for this is how they think their purpose is accomplished. And the next sentence is, is really key to that. Brother, the Holy Spirit knows that sacrifice brings nothing. So, you know, the ego, our bodies, our housing, uh, has us wanting to make bargains always with life. 
and with God and the Holy Spirit and source. And, and yet, uh, the minute you do that, you've put yourself into a state of separation. So, um, I, I, uh, I am here for you if you would like to, to talk about this section in, in any kind of depth. Um, I think the real key is the very last part of it. You gave perception and belief and faith from mind to body. Let them now be given back to what produced them and can use them still to save itself from what it made. So it's suggesting here that you, you give up the physical side of things and really focus on becoming one with spirit and with source. Uh, and next week we will uh, we'll read the, the next section, the fear to look within, which is uh, it's a little bit easier section to process, I think, than this particular section here. But if you'd like to reach out to me, you can reach me at 907-351-3003. Uh, call or text. Uh, you can also message me through the various uh, channels that you find this material. So through Facebook in the Love by Light uh, group, or through YouTube at the Linda Lamp channel, or through SoundCloud, the Linda Lamp channel. And you can also visit my websites lindalamp.com and lindalamp.shop. Both of those have uh, places where you can message me. And I do suggest using the websites if uh, you text me and you don't get a response. Um, that texting, that phone number has gotten, um, even though it was signed up for do not, uh, you know, no telemarketing, it, it has been, that phone number has been compromised now. And we're getting a lot of spam texts and uh, we're blocking lots of numbers. So because they're in chain texts, if you've also fallen prey to these group, uh, group text messages, um, your number may have inadvertently been blocked. So if you text and you don't receive a message or if you call and you can't get through, use the website's uh, forms to send a message and um, we'll go from there. We'll get connected. I wish you all the best with this material and I am here for you. And I look forward to seeing you next week when we uh, tackle the next section. Until then, take care, stay safe, namaste, and much love. <laughs>